Hello and welcome to the second of the two videos featuring a case study for endangered built heritage, the story of Banfi Castle from Bonsida in Transylvania, Romania. In the first video, we have already covered the geographical and historical context of the castle, as well as the events of the Second World War, and we discussed the 1950s, which were highly unfavorable for the fate of many historic monuments. Now we shall look at the 1960s and the early 1970s, which were more hopeful, followed by the last two decades of the 20th century, which in a short period of time caused the complete decay and degradation of an ancient historic building that had previously stood its ground for hundreds of years, as illustrated by this next slide. However, by the beginning of the 1960s, in spite of all its unheard pleas, the Historic Monuments Directorate was determined to save the building, trying to recruit institutions in view of a cultural use for the monument deemed more suitable than the current one. After some time, the Bucharest Cinema Studio became interested, as it intended to use the castle as a film setting. The film Poduria Spunzuraților, The Forest of the Hanged, based on the novel by the same title, by writer Liviu Rebreanu, was shot partly at the castle in 1963, under the supervision of the Monuments Directorate. The situation seemed to turn positive, as a restoration was also foreseen at the castle, with the intention to transform it into a rest and healthcare facility, including a small museum. The designs were finished by 1966, However, interventions could only start in the autumn of 1968, 20 years after the castle's nationalization, due to a lack of funds. In the meantime, large parts of the castle continued to be used for housing, and in 1968, part of the northern tower collapsed due to the continued material extraction. Next, in the spring of 1969, when the interventions on the castle had already started, the entrance's vault collapsed, along with three other vaults and pillars of the stables. And in the spring of 1970, another three vaults with a part of the roof and the chimney collapsed also in the stables. All throughout these, some parts of the castle were still being used by people. The restoration works which focused mainly on the main residential building, were ordered to stop in November 1972, with the exception of the already started works, meaning wooden window frames or protection works against rainwater, and even these were ordered to be finished as economically as possible. In January 1973, the Monuments Directorate noted the still degraded exterior renderings at the entrance and the urgent need of solving the problem of rainwater evacuation at the stables, and recommended that the scattered stone statues and carvings be inventoried and deposited in safety. The worksite was planned to reopen in 1974, but this never happened. The formerly evacuated families returned to the castle, and the ruination process continued. This put an end to all and any further measures of protecting the historic monument. Moreover, in 1977, the national institution responsible with historic monument protection itself lost its attributions and funds. To put it bluntly, it was dissolved. This paralyzed all and any historic monument protection and conservation activities throughout the entire country for more than a decade, until the 1990s. The 1980s was a decade of uncontrolled use and neglect of the castle buildings. Lacking any supervision in terms of its treatment of the castle, the Agricultural Machinery Station and the Agricultural Cooperative opened a mushroom farm in the stables, a chicken farm in the so-called Mikos building, the building that we see in the lower picture, 
a beer bottling station in the former chapel of the castle, and a rabbit farm in the former kitchen. In 1984, the Transylvanian History Museum from Cluj reported on the advanced degradation of the castle's garden. Meanwhile, the castle roofs continued to decay and the vaults to collapse. The photographs from this period also show a lack of carved decoration. The cornice of the stables and the entrance, which are shown on the current slide, used to be decorated with 18th century Baroque statues representing mythological figures. However, these were mostly missing at this point. Some of the statues were transported to Cluj and ended up at two institutions at the National Museum of the History of Transylvania and the Art Museum, later Babes Bolyai University. Out of 46 Baroque statues that used to decorate the Baroque courtyard and main building of the castle, only six statues are still found at the castle, and of these, only one in its original place. In 1985, the castle became once again a film set. The film Emisia Continua, in English translation, Radio Romania Keeps Broadcasting, by director Dinu Tanase, was mostly shot at the castle, without any kind of supervision. The story is set during the time of the Second World War. Thus, during the filming, the buildings were shot at, and some roofs were blown up, without any kind of regard for the values of built heritage, that were being damaged or even destroyed. By this time, the castle came to be abandoned completely. The agricultural institutions moved away, leaving the historical monument completely to its fate after decades of mismanagement. People were free to come in and take anything that they wanted, continuing to use the castle as an open quarry for construction materials. The achievements of the unfinished restoration soon vanished, leaving only the walls and collapsing masonry structures. This was the view that welcomed the odd visitor instead of a living, thriving home that this monument used to be some 50 years prior. To sum up the fate of the castle in the second half of the 20th century, it was damaged during war through intentional arson pillaged by various armies, as well as by the locals, who continued to take materials from the buildings throughout the decades, mistreated by the local agricultural institution that used it, and that was supposed to manage and care for it, ignored by the authorities, in spite of the Monument Protection Institution's insistence, which itself lost all of its authority after 1977 stigmatized due to the social class of its owners and builders, for example in historical narrative and education, where the nobility was depicted as an oppressive class that did nothing but leech of society. Thus, although by the turn of the millennia, almost a decade had passed since the end of communism, no actions were taken to remedy the situation. Moreover, by opening the borders after the fall of communism, a black market had developed for stolen or looted artifacts, goods, and other valuables, which encouraged certain individuals to steal from abandoned buildings or medieval churches that had no communities. There seemed to be a divide between the past and its heritage and the present, with its day-to-day -day problems in an economically struggling post-communist society. Uh, as well as between us, meaning the local population, and them, the former owners of the castle. The mentality of not caring for or even feeling hostility towards a heritage that is, quote, not ours, was present in society and may be found in some places even today. However, in the decades that have since passed, there seems to have been a shift in mentality as ever more people appreciate the beauty of old buildings, ensembles, and landscapes, either just for the pleasure of walking in places full of history and meaning, or for their economic potential as tourist sites. Let me remind you that this is not a singular case. 
Many of the aristocratic residences have shared the fate of Bamfi Castle and were not as fortunate as this monument, which has been restored gradually since the early 21st century. Here, you can see two examples from the region of Bamfi Castle, both still in use before nationalization, both pillaged at the end of the war, both misused and abandoned. Luckily, this was not the case for all aristocratic residencies. The ones taken over by healthcare or educational facilities, for example, survived the 20th century in a better shape. However, these ruins remind us of the words uttered at the end of our first video, a disaster for the history of Transylvanian architecture, a disgrace for the local bodies, and the load on the conscience of architects and people of culture of this country. So to recap the causes of why we ended up here, many of our castles, manor houses, and other types of aristocratic residences suffered damage due to war. In some cases, this was collateral damage. In others, such as the case of Bafi Cancel, quite intentional. They were nationalized, meaning that large parts of land and buildings were appropriated without a proper strategy or without a care for heritage. And they were neglected due to social stigmatization on ideological grounds, meaning the collective guilt attributed to the social class of the nobility, as well as due to some ethnic tensions. In many cases, the cause for degradation was merely a lack of interest, not feeling connected to the heritage site or object. In other cases, it was an intentional inaction or even harm by unauthorized interventions, gathering construction materials, uh, or, inten or intentional destruction. And all of this happened in spite of a historic monument's law existing, as well as the heritage authorities' warnings and efforts. So what can we do to avoid such destruction, which is more widespread than we might think and might happen any time, even if perhaps not for the same reasons? We can appreciate what we have inherited from those who lived on this earth before us, irrespective of political, racial, ethnic, social status, etc. considerations. We need to raise the awareness of the public and of the stakeholders regarding this heritage, as it is our own common responsibility to cherish and care for it. We need to educate our children, the future generation that is going to inherit what we manage to pass on, and we need to use to inhabit built heritage, but in a respectful way and manner. And last but not least, we need to inventory, survey, and document and monitor in both analog and digital format, as well as to make it freely available to the public. Thank you for listening to these two videos about a very specific case study, but which might contain some generally available morals and lessons in terms of how fragile, yet how resilient built heritage can be. If you would like to know more about the past and present of the castle, visit the websites listed here or follow the Facebook page of the castle. Thank you for listening.